Hey everyone, Tony D with another hot take. Um, this one, uh, I've done, I've shot this a few times and I've refined it each take. So I think, I think I know what I'm talking or, or what I'm trying to say now. Um, this hot take is about uh, my theory of brain drain as it applies to the Democratic Party. So to recap, brain drain is the concept um, that I used when describing the mafia, uh, because the modern mafia isn't like the mafia of the 30s and 40s, or the 20s, 30s and 40s, I should say. Because if you go back to the very early days of Italian immigrants coming to this country, actually, you'd probably have to go back to the turn of the century, really, uh, 1910, somewhere around then. When those immigrants came here, there weren't a lot of opportunities. Uh, people were against them, and um, it turned normally productive people to crime. So smart and talented people turned and became members of the mafia who would otherwise have used their talents legitimately. Fast forward to the modern times, now that there's so many opportunities, and you have to understand that people in the mafia a lot of them don't want their kids to follow in their footsteps. That's part of the things they work for. They work to keep their kids out of the mafia because they they saw it traditionally as a survival uh, situation. Uh, I, I'm not doing this because I want to be rich or I expect to you know, live to a ripe old age. I'm doing this because this is how my family survives and thrives. And that was the initial concept. But over the years, that faded away because Italians became just like the rest of America. And those opportunities then opened up for people. And as those opportunities opened up for Italian Americans, the only people who continued to join the mafia were, they were more willing to take shortcuts. They were joining it for different reasons. They weren't joining it for survival. They were joining it because they wanted to be rich quicker. They were joining it because they saw it as a way to not work. They were doing it because they told themselves, well, you know, I'll be more respected than working in some cubicle. Um, in the case of the Democratic Party, the brain drain is coming from the Marxist, communist, socialist, Leninist, whatever you want to call them, the extreme leftist. The radical left, as they've been called, embodied by Bernie and emboldened by Bernie Sanders. So, traditionally, say back in the 80s, there, you know, Bernie Sanders was around and spouting his nonsense, but nobody took him seriously, especially in the Democratic Party. If you had said back in the 80s, yeah, Bernie Sanders, he's going to be the presidential candidate for the Democrats. They would have laughed at you. They would have called you nuts. What are you, crazy? Bernie, he's nuts. Nobody takes him seriously. And back then, nobody did. Um, you know, the optics on a guy who spent his honeymoon in Soviet Russia were just too radioactive for people to even consider it. It, it would have been the equivalent of like, I don't know, a total racist running like an actual racist, not Trump, like I, like Robert Byrd, uh, the, the senator who was actually in the KKK, like if he had run for president, that would have been the equivalent of the shock back in the 80s of a guy like Bernie running for president. It, he just never would have gotten past the gates. The Democratic Party would have laughed at the, uh, the very notion. Um, <clears throat> so now we've had these years and years of people pulling the Democratic Party further and further left. Partly, it's due to the educational system. People in college who get educated, um, unfortunately, ideologically, a lot of people in college, and this, this was true even back when I was in college, there's this undercurrent, I would call it, of, yeah, socialism would work in the United States, but nobody really wants to try it. People are too greedy. That's the only reason. You know, communism, yeah, that would work. It just didn't work under Stalin. It would work here. 
if you know you could get people on board but it's got such a bad reputation for some reason um that was the undercurrent by a lot of academics uh and professors who you would talk to and i think part of the reason is because they lived in not only an academic bubble, but kind of a financial bubble as well. You know, once you have tenure, you're basically unfireable. And uh, you just, I mean, you continue to teach your classes, but you could do all kinds of other stuff. You know, you could write books and make other money elsewhere. And I think possibly that tenure helps reinforce this sense of entitlement, which helps drive um, the mentality of someone who believes in socialism. You know, if I can do this, why can't everybody? What they don't get is the economics at the college. I mean, colleges rake in tens and tens of thousands of dollars, partly because tuition is so high, people are borrow, borrowing money to go, and partly because there's subs there are subsidies from the government uh, sometimes in the form of scholarships and other things. Um, but the thing is, that's kind of an illusion, right? If the United States decided tomorrow, you know what, we're not going to subsidize college education at all, a lot of these colleges would have to cut way back. Um, if you decided that college ha colleges had to be more geared towards the job market, let's say, um, and had to attract students based on that job market, they would also change their their, their deal. Uh, they would cut way back. At my college, there were all sorts of luxuries that had nothing to do with college, and they were fun, but, you know, they didn't necessarily really further my education. You know, having lobster at the dining hall was awesome at the time, I thought, but looking back on it, it seems pretty ostentatious just to serve lobsters to college students for one night. I mean, what the hell did that cost the college? That must cost them a lot of money, right? Maybe not because it was upstate New York and maybe that's a little closer to Maine. They got a deal, but still. Uh, <laughs> and um, so that combined with the, the dragging of the left or of the radical left year after year has turned people off of some of the democratic ideals. Now, initially, their platform was basically civil rights and gay marriage and things like that. But the Democrats won those things. So now they're non-issues. The, I mean, essentially, it's not to say there's no racism, not to say there's no trouble with, you know, uh, people who don't, in marginalized groups, don't face blah, blah, blah. Um, there's still some of that. But it's not to the level it was in the early 60s, not even close. So the Democrats kind of don't have anything to run on. Uh, if the economy was bad, they could kind of run on that with their, with their many programs like, well, you know, the economy's bad, but we're going to give you a bunch of money and retrain you in jobs and... Uh, you know, make sure you don't starve to death and, you know, people could buy into that. But they don't have that luxury. The economy's good. So people aren't thinking, gee, I wish I had free college. They're thinking, hey, I could finally afford college or, hey, I could finally afford to send my kids to college. And they kind of don't have a response to that. What they should be saying is, well, we're going to build on that. How are we going to how are we going to take our ideas of helping the poor and build on that in a in a good economy. And there is no answer. They've actually gone the other way, meaning that instead of trying to build on the good things we have, they're trying to convince you, oh no, it's not good. There are tons more bigotry. See, they don't have that that civil rights thing anymore. They don't have they can't just call I mean they do, but they it, it sounds hollow now when they call Republicans homophobic and racist. That worked in the 80s. You could call it Republicans homophobic all day long because they were. A lot of them were. Um, you, you had that guy from Pennsylvania. I always forget his name. Ugh, but he was, he was really homophobic. He was the one who compared 
homosexual relationships to bestiality on, on the congressman uh, uh, congressional floor. So, you know, that was an easy sell back then. Now, Trump has embraced the gays. He flew the rainbow flag. It's a non-issue. So the Democrats need a new issue. They don't have it. And instead of trying to figure out what the new issue is, they've fallen back on their old issues, trying to repackage and resell the same issue, and it's not working. In that uh, space of not working, the radical left has made inroads because as people get disillusioned, they get pulled in to the radical side and they're made to believe, hey, maybe this could work then. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe our, you know, maybe we got to tear down the whole system and just rebuild it from the ground up. And Bernie is the guy to do that. But what you have to understand, real Democrats, is those people are not Democrats. They want to tear down the entire system. And they don't care if it all gets torn down as long as they get to rebuild things. That includes the Democratic Party. So they are perfectly willing to tear you down. That's why they say the left eats its own. And as I said in previous videos, part of the issue is there are no limits. No one is drawing lines. If you drew a line and said, here's the line. If you go past this line, you're either a socialist, communist, Marxist, Leninist, and you're not in the party anymore. Democrats don't go that far left. That's as far as you can go, and everything past that, we're not interested in. That's what they have to say to these people, and they won't because they're too afraid of losing them. But they're destroying the party from within because the longer they stay in the party, the more they eat away at it, and the more the people on the other end of the Democratic Party, the party, the part of the party that are you know, basically just hanging on to the ideology of being a Democrat, they're jumping ship. You had one guy in Pennsylvania, the state legislature in Mississippi, a bunch of them jumped ship. You had the guy in New Jersey who's a, a, a House of Representatives representative. Um, and, you know, Mississippi, again, it's kind of a red state. So the Democrats that won there were basically very moderate Democrats. They would have to be to win in a state like Mississippi down south. So these aren't Republicans, but to the radical left, oh, they would call them Republicans because they're probably God-fearing people who, you know, they're probably a, there's probably a handful of them that are uh, uh, pro-life and, uh, you know, they aren't embraced by the current Democratic Party because their shift is so hard left, it drives them out. So they've left. If Bernie Sanders is nominated, more will leave. This brain drain drains the Democratic Party of talent and capability, and it creates more enemies for them. Not that the people who are leaving are necessarily an enemy of the new radical left, but they're not their friend, um, because the radical left has no friends. If you do not support the ideology, 100%, you're gone. The bar is very high. The purity test is sky high. And we've seen it time and time again on Twitter. People get canceled. People who supposedly were hardcore members of the radical left. Look at Will Wheaton, right? Will Wheaton, otherwise known as Wesley Crusher, couldn't be more far left. He was so far left, he demanded Twitter kick people off the platform, right? I think he I think he was the one who demanded Alex Jones be gone. Twitter initially said no. Wheaton said, I will take my three million followers or whatever he had, and I will leave the platform if you don't do that. And then he made good on his claim, and he left with his followers, and he went to another platform called Mastodon. Uh, I believe it's called Mastodon. And I believe the deal was, and I don't know this, I, I only read about it, but that Mastodon is an even more left-wing left version of uh, Twitter that's heavily curated, censored, really, and uh, that eventually, or in a very short time, really, uh, Wesley Crusher found himself crushed 
by the throng because he said the wrong thing about transgender people in some discussion somewhere. <clears throat> wrong being wrong to them. And uh, he uh, actually kind of disappeared from the social media scene for a while to sort of recalibrate his brain and kind of figure out, well, what the hell went wrong there? Now, I, I have no doubt that Wesley Crusher, Will Wheaton, is still pretty far left, um, but he's probably not as radical left as he once was, and he probably doesn't support the super radical lefties as he once did because they're not his friend. They betrayed him. <laughs> they, they have no tolerance for anyone who doesn't accept it all. And accepting it all is brutal because there's a lot of crazy, confusing things. It's, it's communism. It's the idea that there are no genders, that there is no tradition, no culture. Uh, everybody is equal and everybody must be made equal through government. That cannot work. Uh, it won't work. And this is why everyone will fight against Bernie, including people in his own party. Um, so what you've seen then is if people, if Bernie wins, more people will leave the Democratic Party and it'll just collapse. It'll collapse under its own weight. Uh, and then maybe the party bosses will pull it together for next time. If the opposite happens, they have to kick the socialist and communist out of the party forever. After Bernie, they have to sit, draw a line in the sand and say, this is as far as you can go left and still be a Democrat. That's the only way to maintain the party. Because the idea that these people will reluctantly vote for Biden just to get at Trump is laughable. Because most of these people won't even vote. Most of these people think Bernie is too far right for them. They're just, you know, since he talks a good game about socialism, they, they, they like him. But they, they may not vote for him. A lot of them. So if you're a Democrat, you're, you're, you're probably thinking, what the hell has happened to my party? So your choice is either stay and fight for the soul of the party, the ideology, and get it back somewhere near the middle, somewhere in a place where people can go, oh, yeah, Democrats, they're cool. Uh, or it's time to abandon a party, start a new party, uh, or you know, really re-examine your ideology and, and, and ask what you really believe. You know, I'm... A libertarian, I would invite you to take a look at what we believe. I, I think you would find it very uh, 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 centrist and, mo and, 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 and very uh, sensible. Um, I don't have time to go in, into it in this video. Just about done here. Um, so, yeah, I don't think Bernie's going to win this thing. Uh, some of the primaries are starting right now, but we'll see. Um, I mean, I think he's probably going to have more votes, but I think Biden's going to do surprisingly well in the other states, at least enough so we head into a contested election and then the superdelegates will just hand it to Biden. I, I believe that's the way it's going to go. And they'll just deal with the radicals. It'll be time for people to turn against these radicals, I think. I think it's time for them to hit the switch on the media, say, F these people. It's time to drive them out. And uh, let's turn the cops on them. Let's turn the fire hoses on them. And let's, you know, sweep them all out of here. And if they want to go start the Socialist Party of America or join the Democratic Socialist Party of America, let them go right ahead. Because you don't need these people in your party. They infiltrated video games and comic books and pop culture. And they're destroying it. And they don't care. They absolutely do not care. Go on Twitter and try to reason with these people. You'll, you'll be banging your head against the wall. They, they, there is no reasoning with them. They know what they know, and that's it. And they will screech at you. Uh, and the only thing to do is just ignore them until they run out of steam and go find somebody else to pick on. It's, it's this internet mentality that's permeated. I, I would say a lot of these people are their kids who don't know any better, and think they do, and they're very privileged and very entitled. And I think a lot of them are mentally ill. Uh, I think the I, I no one was surprised by the 
case study that said, you know, people on the extreme left tend to be mentally ill uh, because I think they are. And they, they, they certainly act that way uh, in their behavior. So good luck, mentally ill socialists who are trying to elect Bernie. You're going to need it because uh, Bernie ain't going to be president.